Over the next 10 hours, his ship slowly sinks into the harbor. Finally, after a globe-crossing journey from Singapore, the hull is afloat. Now it's time for a mind-boggling lift. The gas processing platform is as big as a city block and weighs almost 9,000 tons. The crew will have to hoist it 200 feet into the air and strategically lower it onto the hull's support pillars. It's like lifting a 500-foot warship. There's only one machine for the job, this heavy lift device, or HLD. It's one of the largest of its kind in the world. The first step is to slide the topsides along this skidway and onto this barge. It'll take two huge winches and a little lubrication. These men in the white overalls are applying the grease on top of the te Teflon skidway. We call it pumpkin wax. It's kind of pumpkin color, but it's gooey, it's sticky. And my wife says every time I walk by it, it attaches itself to me. The winches turn, and the seven-story platform begins to move. At the water's edge, the process gets trickier. Water in the barge's ballast tanks has to be carefully adjusted to accept the massive weight. It takes eight hours, but finally the platform is on the barge. Tugboats wrestle the platform into position underneath the HLD. And the crew attaches huge A-frames to lift it. But high winds kick up again. In these conditions, lining up the hull perfectly under the platform will be almost impossible. We need to make sure that the hull is in the appropriate position when we stab down because we only have a three inch tolerance when we stab down and that hull has to be in a perfect position. For now, the operation is on hold, but it won't slow down another mega mover. Out in the Gulf, preparations for the hub's final home are underway. Keeping the enormous independence hub secure in the Gulf's stormy seas will require heavy-duty anchors and a special ship to install them. Meet the Boulder. The columns of her pontoon-like hull make her incredibly stable, essential for lifting the huge anchors which will secure the hub to the ocean floor. With her massive open deck, she looks more like a platform than a ship. If the boulder doesn't install the anchors perfectly, the independence hub could pull free. That's what happened to this hub. Thunder Horse was the biggest hub in the Gulf until Hurricane Dennis ripped it from its moorings. To make sure this doesn't happen to the independence hub, engineers are installing 12 permanent anchors called suction pilings. A two and a half mile long cable will connect each piling to the floating hub. The Baldur's challenge, place each piling at exactly the right spot and perfectly level nearly two miles down. If she succeeds, these will be the deepest pilings ever installed. She'll need her cranes, some of the most powerful afloat, to pull it off. Together they can lift 7,000 tons. 
But it's not just about brute strength. It's also about precision. The Boulder's seven engines help keep the ship right on target. And staying in position is the name of the game, especially when you're installing pilings this big. Each weighs over 200 tons, as much as five tractor trailer rigs. They're each 88 feet long and 18 feet in diameter. Securing them is a process that takes perfect coordination of the cranes. The engines, the winch, the remotely operated vehicle, and the crew on deck. Barges bring the pilings to the ship. Cranes lift them on board and set them down very gently. The crew attaches a harness and chains for the lift. It's a very big and very dangerous maneuver requiring the biggest shackle on board. The crew checks every inch of the shackle. Even the slightest flaw could lead to disaster. What he's doing, he's looking for microscopic cracks in the surface of this shackle that might grow to a critical size when it's highly loaded during lift. If that were to happen, the shackle could fracture and we could have a real disaster on our hands. The two cranes lift the piling to turn it on end. It goes without a hitch and the piling lowers over the side of the boulder. On the bridge, the crew monitors every movement. If the boulder isn't level, or if she begins rocking, the huge piling could become a wrecking ball, crashing into the deck or punching a hole in the ship. With all that weight over one side of the ship, you'd think it could tip over. But back on the bridge, the crew controls ballast tanks in the boulder's hull to counteract the weight. The piling lowers into the sea. Then, in a blast of escaping air, it's on its way. A four-hour journey nearly two miles into the depths. The huge anchor has to be placed within a hair's breadth of a buoy set on the ocean floor and set at the right angle. Wind isn't a problem, but currents are, and the Baldur's engines strain to steady the ship. If the piling isn't installed perfectly, the massive tension of a two and a half mile mooring line could rip it apart. The piling hangs just feet from the ocean floor. What the crew must do now is truly incredible. It's like being on top of a skyscraper and trying to put a nail on the end of a string on a certain spot on the sidewalk. ROVs, remotely operated vehicles, are the eyes of the project engineers, allowing them to inch the massive piling closer to its target. The crew will have to get it just right if the pilings are to be ready when the independence hub arrives. The boulder moves closer to the target, ready to install one of a dozen pilings which will anchor the independence hub at the center of the gas field. They go for it. The 200 ton piling stabs into the sea floor. Does anybody have a visual on draft readings? The piling's weight drives it an incredible 45 feet down. It's in the right place, but is it aligned properly? The orientation's very good. Probably about the best we've achieved thus far. Very good. Tightest one we've had. Hey guys, I was looking. The ROV moves in for step two. It closes the valves that seal the end of the piling. 
Then it connects a powerful pump. As the pump sucks out the water inside the piling, the structure sinks even deeper into the sea floor. Mission accomplished. But the Boulder's crew doesn't have time to celebrate. They'll work around the clock to install the remaining three pilings before the hub arrives. Construction of the independence project is almost complete. The 15 wells, 220 miles of pipeline, 120 miles of control cables, and 12 mooring pilings are nearly ready for the independence hub's arrival. In Texas, it's countdown to the big lift, the last obstacle facing the project engineers. Hoisting the nearly 9,000 ton processing platform onto the four towers of its behemoth flotation hull. It's a job for one of the biggest lifters in the world, the heavy lift device, or HLD. But it's never attempted a load this large. Inside the control shack, engineers continuously monitor the HLD's controls in preparation for the big lift. The mammoth booms are 500 feet long. And 23 miles of cable, weighing 900 tons, run through her motors and winches. Sensors on the booms and the cables provide constant feedback to the engineers. On the hub and the barge, the crew performs their final checks. Then, all but a few crew members move off to a safe distance. A broken cable now would send the mammoth platform crashing to the ground. The lift's motors begin to turn. The cables take up the enormous weight. Then, an ear-splitting boom gets everyone's attention. A fitting for the A-frame has adjusted under the strain. The lift continues. Cables strain as the HLD takes the full weight of the platform. Then, suddenly, one side is free. In the control room, every sensor is double-checked. The motors and winches turn, and the nearly 9,000-ton platform hangs free. But the biggest challenge is still to come. Setting the suspended platform on the four points of its flotation hull. First, the platform has to be raised even higher to make room for the hull. Then, four tugs work in concert to turn the hull and push it into place. On top of the hull, an alignment pin will be the guide to make perfect contact. The hull has to be positioned precisely for the pin to fit inside a 24-inch diameter guide. Ten feet of uh, uh, height from the, the guide to the... Now, it's up to the team leader to thread this needle and mate the platform to the hull. When yours line up, if you get there. Thick steel mooring cables connect the hull to shore. They'll control the critical position of the hull underneath the platform. The team leader communicates constantly with his spotters on the hull's towers. He directs the massive platform to come down. With only three inches of tolerance, it has to be perfect. But the alignment is off. It's turned just a hair. If they continue, the stabbing pin will hit one side of the guide and the platform will miss its connecting points. Yeah, no more, Jerry, Dunn. All right, right there, stop. The team leader calls for the mooring cables to be adjusted. All right, Larry, boom it down on the stuff. The platform eases down even more. 